Moving from one country to another has many challenges. You can ask me, I just did it not long ago. Moved from South Africa, my home country, all the way to the United States. And with that comes a lot of things that you need to get. You need to get a new driver's license. You need to get what Americans call a social security number. You need to get all kinds of things to get your life set up in America. And one of the things that also gets a reset is something we know as our credit score. Now, back in South Africa, I had a credit score. And this credit score is basically a score of how much companies can trust me based off my past behavior. And so when I flew to the United States, landed and started settling here, that credit score got reset because in America, no one knows me. No American company knows me. No one knows if they can really trust me. And the interesting thing was that when I got my first credit score, it was pretty good because I didn't have any bad marks on it. You see, you can be as someone who comes into a country, brand new person, brand new clean slate, and you can have a better credit score than someone who's been living in America for 50 years, but who's made a mistake, who, who missed the payment or whatever. And it's really interesting because this is how trust can be broken. You see, it is you can have consistent behavior, good behavior all the days of your life. If you are in a relationship, if you're in a marriage, and then when you make a big mistake, let's just say you cheat on your spouse or, you know, whatever, there is this breach of trust that happens. And this breach can leave a very deep mark in your character and how people see you, how they perceive you and whether they can now trust you in the future. So now just like that credit score, just like these, how credits are, we have a credit score, which companies rate us on how much they can trust us, how much they can trust us to uh, loan money to us and that we would pay it back or not. And in the same way, just like we can break trust in that way, get a bad credit score, the same way we can break trust with people, in the same way we can even break trust with God. And brothers and sisters, this is very important because our credibility is so important. You see, we call it a credit score because it's about how credible you are in terms of whatever you are being rated as, whether it's someone making good payments or whether it's someone being a good wife or husband or whether it's someone being a good disciple of Christ. The question is, is are you a credible one? Are you someone that if God thinks on his kingdom matters and he's always thinking on his kingdom matters. But when he does, are you someone who comes to his mind as someone he can trust that with? See, that's such a big question. It's so important for us to to ask the question, you know, just like if if your wife, your husband, do they think of you as a credible person? Because they see everything they live with you. Anyone knows, you know, you can hide things. But when you get married, everything gets all out and exposed all out in the open and they can see everything you thought no one knew about. Right. And in the same way, God is even more. He knows even more than anyone else. He can see everything about you. And the question is, is when he sees everything about you, what does that make him do? Does it make him trust you? Does it make him feel like he can't? See, my sisters, what I'm talking about here is important because it's in the Bible. We read in Matthew 25 verse 23, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set over you much. 
Enter into the joy of your master. We all want to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. We always quote him. We always say, I want to just hear that. I just want to hear that. I just want to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. But what does it take to hear those words? You see, brothers and sisters, what it does is it takes us to be faithful over the little entrusted to us. Just like he said there in context, you were faithful over a little. Now I will set over you much more. You were entrusted with a little and you proved yourself to be trustworthy. You proved yourself to be credible. You proved yourself. And because of that, because I can trust you, because I can think, because I think of you when I think of who will I give this job to, because I can trust you. This is why I'll give you more. This is what the father is saying. Brothers and sisters, I remember. Here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. Just listen. I remember years ago when I was a young boy. I remember when I was in like primary school long ago. Let me be honest with you guys. You know, I've said it on here before. I'm saying it again. I thought like back then, I don't have a lot of talent. I thought I don't know what I'm going to offer this world. And even more than that, what am I going to offer God? Like, what am I going to be to God? How am I going to be able to do anything for God? Because I and I'm really being honest. I had no real talent. When I look at all my friends, some of them were so good at school. A, 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 a academic work. Others were really good at sports. Others were really popular for whatever reason. And I, I was not, I was not good at school. I was not good at sports. I wasn't popular, which was maybe a good thing, but nevertheless, I wasn't much. And I always felt inadequate. You know, and then I just started focusing more and more on the father as the years go by. And when the father gave me something, even a little thing, a little bit of something, I was like, wow, God gave me this. He entrusted me with this. It's such a little thing. But you know what? This little thing, I want to I want to really use this well. I want to really take this as precious and and, and, and guard it and do with it what he wants me to do with it. And, you know, maybe whatever that is in the form, it can be in the form of God telling you to give a little bit of something to someone who doesn't even deserve it or to 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 stop and spend some time talking with someone who and speak life into their life. Or, or maybe it's something bigger. Maybe it's, you know, making a big sacrifice. Whether it's big or small, brothers and sisters, it starts with the small. And when I started doing that, I started seeing the Father entrusting me with more and more and bigger and bigger things. And what is important is that we remain credible. We remain humble. We remain responsible over what he gives us. And so what I started realizing soon is the things that I was the worst at, like my worst, my weaknesses were the things that God started be making strengths in my life. Like the fact that I just couldn't talk in front of people. I was so afraid of people and God turned it around and empowered me to start making that my at the end of the day, what I do, what my, my life consists of. Is, and, and now you see that God takes the little we give him, even if it's the weaknesses, you know, brothers and sisters, the weaknesses are the things God wants most. He wants us to give the things that we are weak in. If God tells you, I want you to do this, but you're, you know you're weak in it. Like he told Moses, Moses, I want you to speak to all these people in Israel. But Moses knew he was weak in it. What did he do? He, he, he ran away. But what we need to do is give it to God anyway and allow his Holy Spirit to empower us because God knows that if we understand that we are not capable of much in that area, we will always remember that he's the one who needs to do it. And if it's not him doing it, we're doomed. We, we will fail. 
People who think that they're really good at something will be deceived to think they're the ones doing it and forget that it's always God. That's why God loves to choose the humble in heart. Those who are weak, those who are meek. That's why you stand a good chance of being used mildly, even if you feel extremely weak, if you feel like you have no talent and all these things. But what is more valuable to him than your skill sets and talents is the fact that you're credible. It's the fact that you're trustworthy. It's the fact that you don't bury what he gives you or take the credit for yourself. But give credit where credit is due and all credit goes to the father of lights who gives to those who are weak. Matthew 25 verse 24. He also who had received the one talent came forward and he said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. You know what he's saying here? It's so profound. What, you know, this master, he reaps where he did not sow. He gathers where he did not scatter. That means that God expects see, uh, fruit to come forth from places where he did not even sow seeds. Where the world didn't think that there would be anything that can come from this ground where there is no seed in it. Yet God can even make it grow. He's the one who does the miracle because it takes a miracle to grow seed, to grow plants from the ground where there are no seeds. But we have a father who reaps where he did not even sow, who who gathers where he did not even scatter. So if he gathers at your table, at your life, what are you going to do? Are you going to have something to offer? You will if you have entrusted his Holy Spirit to work through you, even when you feel like you don't have a seed, you don't have a talent, you have nothing to offer, but he's the one who makes it grow. He's the one who does the miracle in you. But see, this servant made a mistake because he knew that God was able to do these things because he says, I know that you're able to reap what you didn't scatter, uh, give any seed. You're able to gather what you didn't scatter any seeds. But he then goes on. He says, but yet I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I had not sown and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money rather with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what is my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has has will more be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even that what he has will be taken away and cause that worthless servant into the outer darkness. And that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, this servant, he goes to a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see, Rosh Hashanah, the opposite of hearing, well done, good and faithful servant is a place of weeping. You want to hear those words. You really want to hear those words. But see what his error was is so important for us to remember. And that is he was afraid. He was afraid. He understood the power of God. He understood that God can make this miracle happen, that God can do this. But he was afraid. He was not willing to make a sacrifice. Because brothers and sisters, let me tell you, and I can testify of this myself, and I'm sure a lot of you can, that when God asks of us to do something, even in places we are weak in, it takes a lot to do. It's really hard. It's, there's a lot of fear in us when it comes to the things that we know we're weak in, and we know we, and, and God tells us to do something there. Look at Moses. He had fear overtake him. And he said, no, you need to let Aaron speak for me instead. That is sin. That was sin. That was why God became angry at him. But what we ought to do is not is even look, it's one thing to fear, to feel fear. But it's what you do with that. It's how you act on that. That's the big question. Brothers and sisters, I remember when the first time God came to me and he called me, he said, I want you to go. And and there was this event. There was a school that asked me to, te- to, to, to give a testimony 
at the school event, like full of, there was like thousands of kids there. And I'm, and I'm like thinking, God, I am so weak in terms of this. I'm not good at speaking in front of people. I'm not good at any of this, these things. So what am I to do, Lord? I, I, I am afraid. And, you know, I felt like this servant did because he he was afraid. He had a little bit, but he was afraid. And I had a choice. Go or don't go. Go and step up and be uh, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak and work and empower or step down because I'm afraid because I'm not willing to be a sacrifice. I'm not willing to be a living sacrifice in the hands of my father to do his will, even if that will is hard, even if that will is something I feel weak in. But nevertheless, glory to God, I chose to get on that stage and he carried me. And in that moment, I remember it was so beautiful. In that moment, he delivered me from all of that fear of man that was keeping me back. And it doesn't mean that that we never feel fear again. Fear comes and goes like the waves, like the seasons. But it's the reality that I could see. Wow, look at how he carried me. Now, next time I, I may feel fear, I may feel stuff, but he carries me nonetheless. So I don't have to let that stop me from going forth to do what he told me to do. Brothers and sisters, this is how. We go and invest what he gives us, how we go and be wise and credible and trustworthy with the talents that he gives us. It's by going even when it's hard, even when we feel weak, even when all of the world comes against us. And even when the world says and tells us there is no seed that you have, you're not going to bring any fruit forth. You're going to have a plant to give us. You're going to have anything to grow because there's no seed. You know, one plus one is two seed plus water is plant. That's how it works in the world. But when the kingdom of God is different because we serve a God who brings forth wine from water, who walks on the water. We have a God who brings forth uh, plants and he gathers the fruits even from places where he scattered no seed. So he may have not scattered any seed on your ground. But the question is, is when he comes to gather, will you have fruit for him or will your land be barren? And see, the key is his Holy Spirit is the one who empowers. Remember that. Allow yourself to be used. Step out of your comfort zone and let him work. Then you will be called my good and faithful servant. I would like to give a special thank you and shout out to our partners and patrons who have made this video and every other video and teaching this month possible. Blessings and joy.